Southeast Asia teams and CRL Asia have created some amazing moments and also accomplished great achievements in season two. Practice, practice, practice. Not only did Expo Master have the opportunity to use his famous Expo, but also multiple players made the all-kill achievement in King of the Hill. Who are the best 2v2 duo in CRL Asia Season 2? Who is the strongest King of the Hill player? And which team made the greatest improvement? Chaos Theory is definitely the team that made the greatest improvement among all CRL Asia teams. They were the lowest ranking team in Season 1, but now by acclamation had turned into one of the strongest teams in Season 2. Chaos Theory, I think they have exceeded expectation being the last team in the standing last season. And uh, last week they were top of SEA. Chaos Theory had outstanding performance in interdivision plays, which they only lost to Pono Sports and received 7 wins out of 8 matches. They also had amazingly winning rate in the King of the Hill matches, including three times all kill victories. Their capability of 1v1 battle is formidable. Perbedaan season 1 dan season 2 tim Chaos Story. Tentunya yang pertama perbedaannya adalah komunikasi tim dari Chaos Story 4 playernya dari Indonesia dan komunikasinya juga sudah baik dan kita preseason ini kita Kompak, kita rajin latihan, kerjasamanya bagus. Mungkin karena itu, di season ini kita bisa berada nomor 2 se Asia dan bisa. Tapi perjuangan kita tidak sampai di sini, kita masih berlanjut dan tentunya kita pasti terus bekerja keras, bekerja sama, berjuang. The key player of Chaos Theory in season 2 is undoubtedly Benzer Rido, the newly joined gold medalist in Clash Royale tournament in 2018 Asian Games. His superior 1v1 skill secured the team all the way to King of the Hill set. He even accomplished all kill twice and earned himself the best player in King of the Hill set in Season 2. In addition to Ben Zerido, the great performance from Carolus and the whole team's effort successfully made Chaos Theory a true dark horse in Season 2. Karena dari sini kita akan buktikan bahwa Indonesia memiliki pro profesional player yang layak untuk bersaing dengan tim atau player dari dunia. In the last day of regular season, HQ. HQ needs to win all the matches in order to advance to the playoffs. Yet they lost to Brand Esports in the first match by 2 to 0. In the matchup with Chaos Theory, AHQ won the first set of 2v2. I don't think at the moment they have ever lost a match if they have won the 2v2 set. I think if they win 2v2 sets, they will win the match every single time. Master Hong ended up taking 1v1 set and won the match. However, they had to wait for the result of the match between Chaos Theory and Kix to see if AHQ is qualified for the wild card. The result is that we didn't make the playoffs. Um, it was very close between all the teams, but uh, we unfortunately didn't make it. Uh, this year, I still have been a pro player. I mean, it, it's it's so cool to be here and play, still just playing the game I love. Win or lose, it's it's still a great experience to be in Taipei in a different place, and I love the food here. <laughs> Kix 
had the best 2v2 combination in Season 2. Ma Dean and Dios Stitch played 10 2v2 sets together in Season 2 and achieved 80% winning rate, which made them the best 2v2 duo in CRL Asia. That being said, they still faced numerous critical moments in their matchups. For the final game, it was so hyped up. For the last second, we our tower only got 12 HP. For our one, like 10 seconds, we were so nervous. Do they got any small spell to um, kill our Prince Tower? And their tower HP is so low, but it's not our spell range. So we have to use our miner to ship it down for us. Compared to season one, we were one of the weakest team on a 2v2. That was our main weakness. And we totally overcome that and brought one of the best 2v2 teams of the league actually. So we're really happy about this. But now what we need to figure out is we need a bit more flexibility on 1v1 and that will be the main thing we will uh, work on for next season. You also have very um, good memories, good experience with my team, a lot of love, a lot of hate. In the end, it doesn't matter, we did our best, we do what we got, so I hope to um, see you guys in next seasons. This season, they have Manon GP. He completely changed the team and I think they could really rely on him in uh, important matches. Manong Jippy fulfilled his promise of becoming one of the key players in CRL Asia and brought Brand Esports to the next level. Brand Esports had a whopping 10 wins record in Season 2, which defeated Chaos Theory by one match differential and won the championship in the competitive Southeast Asia division. To be honest, after the first two weeks of the regular season, I never thought that we would be the top one of Southeast Asia. Even if the league is very competitive and we need to be very serious about our matches, we tend to be more funny and just laugh it when we're in the matches. Each team and player in the Clash Royale League has demonstrated different strategies with unique deck combinations and brought out the most creative and exciting ways of playing Clash Royale. Tune in on December 1st, 11 a.m. JST for the World Finals on Clash Royale Esports YouTube channel to witness the first ever Best Clash Royale League World Champion team being crowned in Tokyo, Japan.